Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the new discoveries and some of the new research in regards to what you see right here, Planetary Nebula. With the main focus being on the Planetary Nebula that's the closest and probably the most well known. The one that you see right here from a slightly different angle. And the nebula presented by Hubble in this way, the iconic helix. Sometimes also referred to as the Eye of God or even Eye of Sauron. Not to be confused with the Ray Nebula that actually looks somewhat similar, but is actually an entirely different object. And so in this video we're going to discuss some of the new observations from this nebula, with the main purpose being figuring out exactly what happens to stars like our Sun once they release their outer shell, destroy the star system, and become long-living white dwarfs. In other words, because this is technically the future of our Sun, the scientists want to understand exactly what happens to planetary systems in these particular stars, and what's going to happen to all of the planets in the solar system as well in a few billion years from now. With a slightly different paper that you can also find in the description below, also answering another important question. Why do all of the planetary nebula look so unique and so different from one another, despite pretty much all of them having very similar origin? And so let's try to answer some of these questions and talk about some of these discoveries, but first a very important announcement. Despite the name, a very bad name, Planetary nebulae have nothing to do with planets. They're only called that because back in the days, in the early 1700s, early astronomers believed that from a distance they kind of resemble tiny planets, but were also kind of cloudy, so they called them planetary nebula. But once the telescopes became powerful enough, we realized that this is not the case. They are nebula, but they actually come from stars. And not just any stars, stars that are very similar to our sun. And so our sun is also going to become one of these sometime in the future. And they all generally have a relatively similar structure, a lot of gas that was released over time with a very bright center that you see right here. This is a white dwarf. Here is one from the Ray Nebula, although here it's not as easily visible, with each of these nebula containing one somewhere in the center, which is exactly why they are able to produce the colors you see. These white dwarfs, especially if they are very young and very hot, produce so much energy that they actually turn the gas around them fluorescent, making it glow in different colors depending on the shape created around the star. So these are basically massive fluorescent bulbs, with most of them lasting for just over 10,000 years and then disappearing into nothingness. For example, Helix Nebula is believed to be about 11,000 years. In other words, it actually existed for just as long as modern humanity. The modern age began approximately 12,000 years ago after the last glaciation period, although these events are unlikely to be related at all. But despite this object being relatively close to us at 655 light years, it's extremely unlikely that any of this was visible to ancient humans, mostly because these are processed images and in reality these nebula are very dim. Here is for example one of the optical images taken by a relatively powerful telescope. And so you only start seeing these other features if you look at this in other frequencies of light that our own eyes are not particularly sensitive to. And so officially this nebula was only discovered by this wonderful person sometime around 1824. And ever since then we've discovered quite a lot of them pretty much everywhere. As a matter of fact, even recently a lot of amateur astronomers discovered a bunch of these right here in the Milky Way by looking at certain frequencies using oxygen filter. And so if you want to make your own astronomical discovery, Searching for a planet or a nebula is a pretty good way to start. Lots and lots of them have not been found yet. But when it comes to Helix Nebula, which is the closest to us, because of the distance, it's also the one that's sort of studied the most. And also seen in a lot of different frequencies of light in order to discover what's actually happening here. And one of the reasons it sort of resembles an eye is because of thousands of these unusual formations known as cometary knots. They're mostly visible if you zoom into the nebula and look at the edges, and are basically a result of various density irregularities and the phenomenon known as rayleigh taylor instability. The phenomenon that usually produces these observations in various gases and various liquids. Quite a lot of planetary nebula seem to possess them, and in many cases they form beautiful structures around the nebula itself. But in reality, even though we kind of see these features and understand how a lot of this forms, there are still a lot of things we really don't understand about these nebula or even their evolution. For example, we still have no idea what happens to planets once these stars reach this point, or if any of these planets can even survive being shredded by a massive star. Likewise, we don't really understand why these nebula generally look so different. 
There are of course some explanations to how exactly they form and how various features are formed in these nebula, but when it comes to predicting various shapes versus what we observe, there is quite a lot of discrepancy. For example, even though the scientists expect quite a lot of nebulae to possess these rings or basically be circular in shape, in reality not many do. And instead many seem to possess quite a complicated shape that will be very difficult to explain without further analysis. And so in these two recent papers the scientists tried to answer some of these questions. First, the question of planets. What exactly happens to them and is there any way for us to find out their eventual fate? And to get better answers and better observations from Helix Nebula, the scientists behind the paper you can find in the description use several different frequencies from several different telescopes in order to actually find out what's happening right in the middle, right where the white dwarf is. For example, they used observations from SOFIA, one of the most iconic NASA telescopes that was actually retired not so long ago. And very similar to other white dwarfs scientists observed over the years, the one in this particular system shows a lot of hints of some kind of an accretion disk that's very likely being shredded by the white dwarf's gravity and is slowly being deposited on the surface. In this particular case, in Helix Nebula, it's visible as an excess infrared emissions or basically way more infrared light than what's expected from a typical white dwarf. And normally there are three explanations for why this is happening. For example, it could be from some kind of a cosmic dust left over from various planetesimals or asteroid-like objects that are now colliding together and producing all of this extra heat. In this case though, when observing this in certain frequencies, the scientists did not find any cosmic dust that would be indicative of these collisions or of these asteroid pieces. So it's unlikely to be little asteroids. It could also be a result of certain gases such as carbon monoxide or silicon monoxide which could be visible in certain telescopes. These gases have not been discovered either. Or it can also be leftovers, dust and various ices from huge planets that used to exist here destroyed during planetary nebula formation that are now slowly making their way back to the inner region. So basically various planetary remnants returning as large pieces, even cometary pieces, and then interacting with the white dwarf and with other remnants nearby. And based on the observations from ALMA, Spitzer Telescope, Herschel Space Observatory and SOFIA, all of the data points at that being the best explanation. The excess heat or the excess infrared light seems to be the result of the interaction with lots of different planetary pieces that were most likely created thousands of years ago, with several thousand different cometary objects entering the inner region every single year. Which in essence I guess answers one of the questions we had about the solar system. There's a very high chance that this is something that's going to happen to various planets right here in the solar system as well. They might become shredded apart into larger chunks and eventually make their way back to the inner star system and either get deposited on the ancient sun as the white dwarf or might even create some kind of a new structure around the white dwarf including new planets from all of these remnant materials. And we actually discussed one of these recent discoveries of such a planet in one of the videos in the description. But that's of course just one discovery from one planetary nebula. This would now have to be applied to other planetary nebula in order to find out if this is something really common or something that only happens once or twice. But what about their shape? Why do they all look so different? Well, that's where that other study comes in, where essentially the scientists decided to answer this by using some of the most advanced computer simulations. Essentially analyzing what happens to various material around these ancient stars, especially if they possess some kind of a partner or if the white dwarf starts producing certain emissions. And in the end they were able to answer quite a lot of these questions and even simulate certain nebula that we know already exist. For example, because so many stars are usually binary, this usually determines the initial shape of the spiral, with the orbital period determining what the spiral might look like and how it's going to evolve over time. But in some cases, the amount of expansion and the thermal effects can even erase certain spirals, creating something different in the process. And there's also a very important effect from the jets, with the jets usually diluting the material even further and creating additional features. As a matter of fact, it turns out the jets can completely erase everything. They're powerful enough that they can completely erase the spiral and even remove the ring structures. But the power of these jets will really be different from white dwarf to white dwarf. But in the end, it's really the combination of various effects, or basically the combination of partner's effects, overall thermal expansion and the jets produced as a result of the formation of the white dwarf, that then ends up producing 
a completely unique picture somewhere out there. But I guess more importantly, some of these simulations did actually create something that resembles objects in real life, in this case Cat's Eye Nebula. And so in that sense, the simulations from the study seem to actually have answered a lot of the questions we've had about formation of nebula, implying that for the most part they will obviously start the same, but with very different initial conditions. Some will have powerful jets, some will have a massive partner orbiting nearby, and others might actually expand much faster with a lot more ferocity, which in the end results in slightly different shapes. But in some cases, especially in the case of a ring nebula versus helix nebula, the result is relatively similar. So they must have started with very similar conditions. Although even now, we actually still have no idea what our sun is going to look like in the next few billions of years. And so once another study comes out that's actually able to simulate what might happen to our sun and what the solar system might look like, I'm definitely going to follow this up with the next video because I'm actually sort of curious if anyone could one day simulate this, discovering the future of the solar system. But at least for now, these are definitely exciting discoveries, exciting new observations from the Helix Nebula and from other planetary nebula, and even more answers about these unusual objects. Check out similar videos in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support the channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful present t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.